ericmwadithmother.com. Let's take a look at Prudential's weekly chart. And this is a two-year weekly chart. I think it gives us a great opportunity to learn how we can use the charts in terms of various aspects. A great example. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about here quickly is the moving averages. Now, in past videos, you might have noticed that I would from time to time talk about the crossover on the weekly chart. And sometimes it's going to be 10, the 10 week moving average crossing above or below the 13 week moving average. So you can have it either way. They're pretty much similar moving averages. Over the years, I've gone to you. I've gone to rely more on the following. On the weekly, I use eight-week moving average, thirteen-week moving average, or thirty-four-week moving average. Now you might notice that these numbers come from the Fibonacci series. So that's why I use them. Five, six, five, eight, thirteen. 21, 34, on and on, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, 610. All right. So, of course, the numbers come from the Fibonacci series. So, the 8, the 13, and the 34. All right. So, of course, we can see here a good example what happens when you have a bull bullish crossover between the 13-week moving average moving above the 34-week moving average. You get this potential for movement to the upside. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen the opposite, which is crossover, a bearish one, between the 13 and the 34-week moving average, which predicted what we are seeing here is a continuation of the recent slide. All right. Also, something else. Take a look at this movement of the moving averages. Moving averages go here. They try to move higher. They stall. They go here. Try to move higher. They stall. So what you can do is use this line here, this most recent failure point, as a level to watch. Should the moving averages move above that level, that becomes a buy signal. Again, the most recent failure point was here on the moving averages. About let's, go, let's use the eight-week moving average or the 13-week moving average. Once it comes back and clears this level, that is an indication of a change in momentum. It will be similar to this period here where you have the eight of the 13-week moving average holding support, tries to move higher, and then breaks this breaking of the moving averages tends to indicate a change in the climate favoring movement in the direction of the break i hope that makes sense again we are using the moving averages to break out and once they clear a recent failure point then you can use that for a reason to enter a trade for example here we can see the moving averages trying to recover, they come back and break. Once the moving averages break, that tends to be an indication of continuation in the direction of the break. So you can also use the moving averages once they clear a recent resistance or support level as an area of indication of change in momentum. Now, here in the green, I highlight an area where we see the stock go into a nice bullish period here. It moves above 50, stays above 50 generally speaking until here. So you enter here when it moves above 50 and you can get out here when it gets and moves back below 50. Either way, you have a chance to ride this move from about 34 to the highs here of about 50 and that took about more than a year about a year and a half 
Now, this is great for those who have patience and don't have the luxury of watching the market moment to moment. They can buy based on long-term signals and wait to sell down the road when the conditions change. So one thing we also see here is when an instrument is in a bullish phase, it's going to trade with its RSI above 50. So a bullish phase is when the RSI is trading above 50. Okay. Now, if we take a look at the MACDs, we can see that uniform activity below zero back above it in this MACD action, which gave us this entry. which also coincided with this MACD moving above a recent failure point or a series of recent failure points, which is here. Notice the MACD fails to move higher, fails here around this level. MACD fails again, fails again here. But ultimately, we move above this zero level of the MACD, which is a change in the momentum, coinciding with the MACD moving above zero, coinciding with RSI above 50 coinciding with price moving above and eventually leading to the crossover between the moving averages. Now we can see a similar type situation where the MACD was failing or let's say the MACD was finding support here support support ultimately it comes back and breaks it that's a change in the behavior. This also coincides with another area of the MACD, which is here, corresponding with this support zone. Try to support here. Ultimately, we break below that level and we drift lower. That's a change in behavior. Change in behavior with the break, change with behavior in the break. Here, we move below zero. This movement below zero is very important because it tells you that the average price movement on a week-to-week -week basis is to the downside. In other words, you have bigger moves to the downside, smaller moves up during this phase. In other words, you are losing ground when the MACD is below zero. Now, something else I want to show here is take a look at this line here, which is the red line. So you notice, so it was support here, and then we broke down here. Once we broke down, the same line, the red line, became resistance. So these lines might seem arbitrary, but the market was responding to them because we failed to recapture back above the red line. Now that failure point corresponds with this price action here, this period. Actually, why don't I just show you the that level? So this failure point here corresponds with this price level, actually. So, let me make another quick observation. It is one that is usually ignored or not really emphasized. But you can see moving above the MACD zero line. And the MACD zero line should be very clear by now. Of course, the MACD zero line is here. But you'll notice moving above the MACD zero line coincides with this entry, which was very successful. And we had a bullish uptrend. Not every day, not every hour, but over a period of months until we broke back below this level, which is somewhere here. So in a way, we can see that holding above the MACD zero line tends to favor a bullish uptrend, generally speaking. All right, let me stop right there. This is Eric Moad with Mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and 
blessings. E A C S. Woo! Yeah! Chicka chicka fresh! Yeah!